In this video, we will be discussing creating and using cameras. If you'd like to follow on with this video, please open the file 2001 creating and using cameras.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. You use cameras to create perspective views of your models, simulating real world views of virtual objects. Just like using a real camera, the resulting views are based on the camera's position, target, field of view, and lens properties. Cameras are physical objects that can be selected, moved, and manipulated within the AutoCAD environment. They have a limited set of properties that you can modify either by manipulating them with the cursor or through the properties palette. When you create cameras, you are creating an actual named view. When the perspective property is set to off, only a parallel projection view is created. When the perspective property is set to on, a camera is created and appears as a view in the view list. To create a camera, you go to the render tab, camera panel, and then create camera. Note that there is a toggle for the camera display. So let's click on create camera. Let's zoom in and notice that if you acquire specific points, so let's go ahead and acquire the midpoint of this countertop, we can actually use tracking to get to that elevation. Note afterwards, it'll be very easy to actually change the elevation of these. We'll go ahead and click it. And then for the target location, I'll go ahead and click this bowl. You are then prompted for the options and properties that you can change for your camera. But for now, let's just press enter. It'll actually be easier to change them afterwards. If we rotate the view, we'll notice that there's our camera. And as you can see, it's pointing in the location that we clicked on. So let's go ahead and select the camera. Notice that it automatically brings up the camera preview dialog box. In the view, we also get these great little grips that appear. If you hover over the grips, you'll notice you get an actual tooltip that'll tell you what this does. So if you want to change the target location, you can simply pick this blue grip here and notice that you can actually now start snapping and this view will update automatically to show you the different spots that you're actually targeting. Using the camera view is a great little way to actually visually see your design and kind of fly into the drawing. Note these grips here allow you to change the field of view. So I click on that, notice how I can actually change that field of view. If you're having problems with it snapping accidentally, you can turn off 3D O snap and O snap to allow you to kind of just see the actual design as you want to. This is really cool. There's also a grip here that actually allows you to rotate and move the camera around your view. Again, it's really cool, especially if we set this to polar tracking, it allows us to rotate the view around the design based on where we are located. I'll press escape. That still keeps the camera selected. You can also go to the properties palette and change any of the properties right here. So this is actually another location of where you can change, let's say the Z height. So let's say you didn't snap to the correct location. You could actually go to the camera Z and change the elevation. Right now, the elevation is at approximately three feet. Let's go ahead and change this to five feet. Press enter and notice how it's updating automatically. You can very easily just change the camera Z. And if you wanted to change the target Z as well, you could do so. Let's say we want to go a little bit lower. Type in two feet and now we're pointing down. Again, changing these cannot be any easier than simply applying them in the properties palette. You can also change the visual style here to minimize the processing speed that is happening while you're viewing your design. So what actually happens when you create a camera view? Let's go ahead and press escape and let's go to the home tab, view panel, and let's look at the named view dropdown and you'll notice we actually have a named view called camera one. So if we click on it, it actually will bring up that camera in our view. That's even cooler. Well, guess what else you can do? You can actually change the properties of the name view of the camera view. So let's go ahead and click this drop down here and we'll click on view manager. This opens up the view manager dialog box. And here is our name view called camera one. You can actually rename it if you want to. So we'll call this one front of cabinet. So it makes sense to you if you come back into the file and you can view your design. And you can also create layer snapshots. So we'll say yes to this. That way it'll create a layer snapshot of the name view. And let's change our visual style to realistic. So you are actually able to change the different properties as you need to of the camera view. We'll go ahead and click on set current, click OK. And now we have our view set to that visual style. If you change those properties or settings at all, it'll update the name view automatically. Very cool. Let's go ahead and create another one. And let's create it from this location here, looking out our window. And let's say we want to actually add a background image to our design. 
So first I'll set my visual style back to 2D wireframe and we'll right click on this and make sure we're set to parallel. That way, when we rotate the view, it gives us the real true rotation and not a projected view. So I want to create a camera view snapping from this cabinet here, looking outside this way here. So we'll go to the render tab, create camera command, and I'll go ahead and turn on my snaps. And let's go ahead and snap right there and we'll point out to the center face of the actual window. We'll press enter and now we'll go ahead and select the camera and notice how it's automatically showing it to us at that window. Again, this is really cool. Let's go ahead and change our field of view to show a little bit more of the kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and turn off O snapping so I don't accidentally snap and I can just go in here and just change it as I need to. So let's say we want a view of something like that. Note that you can also change the height of the camera if you need to by simply moving it up like so if you wanted to. And as you can see, we're now seeing the ceiling and so on. Let's say we want to add a background view to this actual camera view. You can actually do that in the view manager. Now, before I go to the view manager, let's go ahead and set our view to the camera's view. You can do so even easier than going to the home tab by simply right clicking after you select the camera and going to the set camera view. And just like that, we now have the view set to that camera. That's pretty cool. Let's press escape to clear our selection set. And let's simply type in V and then enter. That's a quick way to get to the view manager. So here's the new camera that we created. And let's go ahead and click on this and say, looking out window. Let's go ahead and change our visual style to this one called Viz. We'll go ahead and save a layer snapshot. And then for the background, right over here, we can actually change this background override to an image. So let's go ahead and click on the browse button here and we'll select this sunset.jpg file, click open, and let's go ahead and click on the adjust image tool. And here's where you can actually adjust the background image. So right now, this would actually only stay in the background. If we click on the scale, and then we click on the stretch, it'll actually stretch it across the entire background of the drawing view. Let's go ahead and click on OK. Click OK here. Let's click on set current. Click OK again. And now we've got that background view automatically showing in the background there with all the shadows and the rendering materials and so on. This is really cool stuff. One thing to note, if you delete the camera, it also deletes the named view. Note you can toggle this off to turn the display of your cameras off. This concludes this video discussing creating and using cameras.